llegué a los estudios Fox, me voy a estacionar. Fui a un evento en los estudios Fox aquí en Los Ángeles. Fui invitada para asistir a la premia película de Book of Life, que es el libro de la vida. La película va a ser estrenada aquí en Los Ángeles el 17 de octubre, la verdad en otras partes, en México y en otras partes del mundo, la verdad no estoy segura cuándo va a ser estrenada, pero el viernes 10 de octubre fui a la premiere, así cuando estaba en el estacionamiento, la película está súper linda, me gustan demasiado ese tipo de películas, aunque sea una película en caricatura, que muchos han de decir, ay, Qué aburrido ir a ver películas de caricaturas, nada más son para los niños. La verdad no, es una película demasiado tierna que habla de familia, habla de amor, habla de amistad. Tiene un mensaje hermoso que no les platico más porque no se las quiero arruinar. Chicas, vine al screening de The Book of Life. Les voy a dar como que un super tour y vlog. Estoy en los estudios Fox. Estoy súper emocionada. Vamos a caminar y les voy a presentar todo lo que vamos a ver. Espero y lo disfruten conmigo. ¡Qué emoción! Entraron Guillermo del Toro y Jorge Gutiérrez. Empezaron las preguntas. O sea, había muchísima gente y todas tenemos la oportunidad de hacerle una pregunta. Habían tantas personas, tantas preguntas. Les voy a poner como que un clip de esas preguntas. Pero todas las preguntas esas son en inglés porque este evento es aquí en Los Ángeles. Pero yo como que todavía me quedé como que con una espinita porque yo le quería preguntar algo a Guillermo del Toro en español para ustedes. Porque quería compartir esto con ustedes y yo sé que no todas hablan inglés. Así que tuve como que las suerte del mundo en poder preguntarle una pregunta en español Ah, en español sí, sí. Ajá. Bueno, es, realmente el oficio es una mezcla muy tremenda de suerte y, e insistencia y realmente es un oficio evolucionario lo que quiere decir que todos aquellos que no pueden con las pruebas tan terribles que existen se mueren en el camino es muy difícil uh, para un artista entender esto porque normalmente en las artes eh, el artista puede ser frágil y creativo y sobrevivir. El cineasta es una mezcla de fragilidad creativa y brutalidad productiva. Entonces necesita ser muy fuerte para sobrevivir a una industria que es brutal, bestial, agresiva, muy orientada hacia lo comercial y sin embargo mantener la parte de tu corazón que es infantil y pura y limpia, viva. Entonces es bien difícil y el camino mismo que tú te vayas haciendo es el único. O sea, la gente me dice, ¿cómo le haces? Le digo, mira, lo que pasa es que la solución de cada una de estas cosas es individual. Conforme vas cruzando el puente, se va cayendo atrás de ti. Si yo te digo cómo le hice, es imposible replicar esas condiciones o cómo lo hizo Cuarón. O cómo... Tus condiciones se van a ir dando y parte de tu instinto de sobrevivir es reconocerlas. Ir reconociendo cuando esas oportunidades se presentan. Entonces... Por desgracia no hay mucho que te pueda decir, sino como decía Calimán, serenidad y paciencia. Gracias. Can you tell us again about the process of getting Guillermo del Toro to work with you? Uh, I think it'll go down in, in Hollywood history as the it worst. Infamy. <laughs> yeah, infamy. for me. Uh, so for many, many, I mean, I've been trying to get to Guillermo and present him the story for the movie for a long time, and then eventually he said, okay, you know, because uh, I guess a lot of they have that movie that were presented to you, that you weren't into. That was terrible. And <laughs> <laughs> so then this, this was it, this was my chance to go over there. And so we practiced, we practiced, we go to his house. It was in August in LA, and it was really, really hot. And so we made the horrible decision to pitch to him outside in the yard. And it was, it was like 110 degrees. And so they told me, you have 20 minutes to pitch him, but you were, you were like, no, no, you have five minutes to pitch me. <laughs> so I'm trying to cram the whole movie in five minutes, and as soon as I opened my mouth to start pitching, the house next door, it, it seemed like 10 leaf blower guys and 10, <laughs> 10 lawnmower guys all at the same time. <laughs> so I started yelling to him the movie, and I almost fall in the pool like three times. It was a disaster. <laughs> so by the end of it, we go back to his house. I'm drenched, but he's, you know, sweat. So you were like, I don't have those lamps. <laughs> <laughs> so we sit down, and I'm ready to just, you know, shake his hand and, and get out of there. 
And Guillermo goes, that was a really terrible pitch. <laughs> and I say, I know, I know. And he goes, but I know the Tigre, and I've seen your cartoons on Mad, mm -hmm. and so I know your sense of humor, and I know uh, sort of how you see Mexico. So there, you know, the story's going to need some work, but these visuals, I can see a whole world already thought out. So, oh, of course I want to produce you. And, and imagine, for me, it was... It was it was one of those moments I will never forget. That it was, it was my hero giving me a compliment, and my hero saying, I'm going to help you. I felt like a little 10 year old kid mm -hmm. dressed up like Robin, and then the Batmobile pulled up and looked at Batman <laughs> opened the door and said, Get into the school fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't look like, like a Batman. <laughs> you don't look like so, any of the Batmans before. So, as you guys can imagine, it was, it was, it really, I mean, it's a dream that came true, and I'm, the fact that we're hearing the talk about it, he's sitting next to me, this is crazy yeah, to me. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah, well, a few months ago, you talked about that the, um, basically you let funded Jorge to do the dream, but there was a few times that you were like, no, no, like, don't do that, but then you let it go. Is there any particular scene or storyline that you see now that you're like, okay, you were right? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. We, when we had dinner uh, two days ago in Mexico City, I said to Jorge, these were the two things that I told you. I mean, m many times we discuss, and I say it's wrong, and he would come and eventually agree. Many times he would say this is right, and I would regretfully agree. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, at, at dinner the other day, I said to him, look, the two times that we came to really, really disagree vehemently, yeah. I said you were right. So, uh, of course, I have. The, the, the great thing about collaborating is you should be completely shameless about being wrong. You know, you should just accept it as, I don't believe in perfection, and neither does Jorge. And I certainly don't believe in that as a basis of a friendship. And so we are friends, and I, you know, I adore him. And I, I, I really think it's very important for him to cement his instincts and know that the things he held for, he was right. But I think the duty of a producer is that. If, if a director says yes to everything you say, he's not a good director. And no matter how close you are, it shouldn't happen. Because it should be you, you. You should be the guy that pushes to test. This is like a crash test dummy. You know, you're you're testing the limits of safety, and then the, the director bounces back. We live in a world that it almost feels like some of our relationships become like iPhones. So when they become so we it does them away. You know, and I think we need to cherish that. It's it's so beautiful that you get to be with them every year. It's, it's truly something powerful and, and beautiful about that. And then we would go to a market that was outside of the cemetery, which is called Todos Santos, which means All, All Saints Market. And what it was, it was the biggest uh, shop, the biggest uh, shops about, they would sell you candy skulls, rubber skeletons, plastic skeletons, uh, everything. And, and Guadalajara and the Panteón de Mezquitán. And I, you, you would end, it was my, the, the gifts that were made perfectly for me. All I wanted was skulls and skeletons. Like they say, what, what is it with your Mexicans and death? I don't know, but we, we, I really wanted that. And so every morning on the day of the dead, I would go to my grandma and say, let's go, let's go right now. Yeah. And I, I think that the message of day of the dead is to live. Mm -hmm. that, w that we are going through a time that is so precious and we get tangled in the past and we get tangled in the future and we get tangled in so much, and we shy away from discussing death as if it's a bad thing. But in discussing that, you discuss life. And you become more aware that you should live. And you should do whatever you need to do to be alive. So the, the movie is full of that vital, beautiful, powerful, light energy. Que se acabó la hora de las preguntas y las respuestas. Uh, Jorge Gutiérrez primero salió con nosotras y nos tomamos fotos. Oh, should we make a line? Yeah. yeah.